here, but you are going to be so excited to share this with our community. I want to first thank some people that are here today. Um, Mr. Curioni, who is the organizer um, of this exhibition, she comes to us from the Kilimanjaro Melania Hotel. Um, she is joined by two curators from the Museum of Stewart in Florence, Italy, um, Martina Becchetti and Ricardo Fonche, who's here with us. Um, also, we have a wonderful uh, Devada Desara is here with us as well today, and we can talk around Franchetti as well. I want to introduce you also joining us today to Peter Keller. Dr. Peter Keller is our CEO and President of the Bowers Museum, and also we have Anne Shi, who is joining us today. She is the Chair of the Bowers Museum Board of Directors. Um, all of them will be available to you today during the visit and after the visit. We have Mark Mustamonti here beside me. He is the research assistant, research associate here at Bowers Museum. He will take you through. Um, I wanted to let you know that this beautiful exhibit opens with uh, two beautifully armored uh, knights that are on their way to um, The exhibit ends with a nod, a romantic nod to the knight um, and the wonderful characteristics that they stand for bravery, courage, and all things beautiful and romantic. I wanted to point out there's a sword in this exhibit, and that sword says, if you do well and you do just, you have no fear of the blade. And when I first saw that sword, I thought it was a ceremonial sword. But it's actually an executioner's sword, giving you advice that you better listen to or else. And with that, Peter is going to open up the exhibit. And I also wanted to point out this is the West Coast premiere of this exhibit. It has never been seen on this coast. Uh, so we welcome you to enjoy Knights in Armor. And it's still a work in progress because we don't know if it's exciting. Still a work in progress. All right, welcome. If you'll follow me right on. So, knights in armor, could there be an image more transposed in the minds of people uh, than this? You know? The first thing we're read is children, is stories, legends of these knights doing heroic deeds, and this exhibition is the story of them. It covers approximately from the uh, 14th, 15th century up until the 19th century. It's a variety of periods. Um, the earliest, of course, is the late medieval period, which is generally what we are really thinking of when we think of medieval knights. Uh, but then it gets into Renaissance armor, you know, really elaborate pieces that are, that are decorative and, and, and ornate in ways which armor had never been before. You know, it had been functional originally, and now armor suddenly, you know, was intended for great purposes, for jousting, you know. These two figures which greet us as we enter the exhibition are actually betrayed as uh, jousters in a tournament by this little piece of metal here, which would have held a lance. Uh, and you have a million other things of that sort, which, which indicate the purpose of this armor beyond combat, but actually is ceremonial, uh, as a tool used by lords of showing off their wealth uh, and the cultural importance of them and their power. Uh, and so, as we continue around, um, let me take you into the first section of the exhibition. Uh, here we have an homage to the medieval joust. The same image I just spoke of, um, that really is the epitome almost of what knights became in later centuries. Again, originally it had been about the combat, about the struggle for, for land and for uh, victory over one's opponents. But in this era, it became about honor, you know, about defeating one's rivals in uh, what had become a very ritualized um, tournament setting, even though it had begun originally as a form of um, actually testing out one's cavalry to make sure that they would do well uh, in that. Uh, and so you can see this is a model that's much later. Uh, it comes from approximately the 19th century, something that would have been from the life of the collector, uh, who is the other uh, real focus of this exhibition, um, and that is Schiebert himself, the man who created the Museo Schieber, um and brought together all of these works in one museum, in one place for the first time. He himself was interested in this revival, um, in the 
romantic rebirth of this thing, you know, because the real triumph of medieval armor is its ability to continually inspire us. Um, and so you can see here, the model is only a small fraction of the whole image of the actual jouster with his lance. This, if you were at our preview yesterday, our uh, crate opening, um, this is actually the piece of artwork we had on display. Now you can see what he would look like with his lance. Um, the armor was just about too heavy to wear um, on foot. It weighed approximately 50 pounds. Uh, jousting armor could weigh as much as 110 pounds, uh, which is an incredible weight, too much to bear if you're going to be walking around the field of combat. Um, but if you're seated on a horse, you could practically exist as a cabin, almost. You know, you're not mobile. Your only goal is to stay on that horse and not get deep thrown. You folks are welcome to come in a little bit more. And, and please do follow me um, as I move around. There's a lot of things to see, so um, I will be constantly moving. Um, referring now to these works of art, these help visualize the exhibition, you know, the pieces in it, what, what it actually would have looked like combat, you know, the, the original intent of the armor, and then you see here, just next to it, how it became used as part of a ceremonial procedure. Um, the other interesting thing is that I've spoken a little about how uh, knights exist in contemporary culture, um, and part of that, we can actually see here, um, the symbol some of you may recognize, uh, the man is a knight of Malta, um, and so you can see that the knightly orders still very much exist uh, in the 21st century. Um, certainly they've changed. They don't go around parading on battlefields anymore. Um, instead, they're doing charitable deeds, um, serving the other um, values of chivalry, um, you know, honor and courage uh, and, and, um, and faith. And so, moving right along, um, pieces, you know, individually may speak to one of many things in this exhibition, but here, we see this is a suit of armor which is elaborately decorated. And this kind of indicates what I'm talking about with how armor, which had once been so defensive, became over time instead, um, you know, elaborate. The, the, the embroidery that you almost see on it is, is as if it was made of fabric as opposed to made of metal. You know, it's incredible that armorers over time develops the, the tools and procedures that they needed um, to, to create armor of this, of this quality. Um, but certainly through techniques like aquaforte um, and others that we'll see later on, um, eventually we see really scientific techniques like galvanization employed uh, to absolutely incredible effect uh, later on in the exhibition. 